Fedheads, this is Jared Grillet. We're on location today at Outlaw Cigar South. Um, most of you remember a couple of years back, uh, this guy kind of uh, exploded on the scene at the uh, IPCPR trade show. Um, interestingly enough, made a lot of buzz just with one cigar line. Must have been really good uh, because industry's been buzzing ever since. Uh, we're here with uh, Omar for Tello Cigars. How's it going today? Thanks for having me, man. Right. Thanks for having me. It's always fun to come around, spend a little bit of time with the shop, spend a little bit of time with our guys. Uh, to, you know, spread the word of what has been so exciting about our company and uh, the reason why we are, you know, one of those guys that have been sticking around for the last couple of, you know, for the last year, year and a half, you know, doing some great boss and creating some, you know, it's just basically, it's all about the cigar and being able to create a great blend with the cigar. So, just for that first line, of so much attention, what is in your mind that, that really grabbed a hold of everybody that made that one line spread so quick? So there's a lot of things that, uh, that have to happen to basically get a cigar from conception, you know, basically from your or from a concept in the basement of your house, in the, in, in, in the backyard or while on your deck. Uh, for me, it was everything about the cigar itself, the branding of how you brand your cigar to make sure that it's got an appeal to the end customer, um, and make sure that you are able to put the Put the rubber on the road. It's uh, it's about you know introducing your cigar to a larger audience. People that have been walking into all ball cigar that have never had my cigar. Some of the guys have been telling me, Omar, uh, I have never had the cigar, so don't worry about it. I like, good. It's like, why are you saying it's good? It's because now you have. It is now the ability to be able to enjoy and to get that connection with other other people that have never tried your cigar. So all of a sudden, you're enjoying a new blend, you're enjoying a new size, and uh, and that's something that might be in the interview with you. Awesome, awesome. You know, one of the things I noticed, one of the things I really thought that really um, has caused it to catch on is your your marketing. All the marketing you got. You got all this great merch. You have t-shirts and keychains and glassware and coffee and, and all these other things. I really think that's kind of helped to catch on. What is what is your like marketing philosophy as far as getting that out there? You know, I, I'm trying to do, there's so many, there's so many, there's just so many more actors that you can put out. There's just so many more, uh, uh, you know, holders for cigars. There's just so many more, everything that is. So I, I try to do a little bit more that could be just a little bit more unique. So a keychain is something we haven't done. And, you know, and you see that every so often, things like that. But we do it as part of our packaging so that the people can, you know, enjoy it. We send it out to some of our retailers so that they understand, hey, it's not all about another action, but we got, you know, a little bit more of that branding to be able to continue to pop out. And we're very proud of the branding we did, yeah, Jerry, because we've been able to get something that nobody else has done in this industry, which is our band itself, uh, to actually angle around the cigar like nobody else has done. So that's why we feel very good. Um, speaking of the coffee, because I, I noticed that we uh, one of the shows that we got on the Federation has yes. uh, been out not too, for, for a little while now called Sharing Our Pairings. Uh, we have a lot of big coffee fans uh, on the Federation. Um, you know, you got uh, uh, coffee for your yes. for your branding. We know a lot of other guys have started doing that. Enrique's got yep. uh, coffee you started for Fettino well. too. Yep. Uh, Skip, just started. Skip's got some for his uh, Roma Craft line for the Intemperance. So what is it you think? Is it just because coffee and cigars have been just kind of that classic pairing all this time? Or because, you know... Uh, Gourmet coffee is kind of making it big. What is it you think that's kind of getting that role in this one? To me, it was, I'm a big fan. I'm a, I'm a coffee fanatic, right? So I, I, I love coffee with my with my cigar. And so when I started with the coffee idea, it was a very simple idea. It's like I would really enjoy to blend a particular coffee, to do a cupping for my coffee, you know, for a coffee that would just mesh perfectly with my cigars, right? So I have a good combination between both. So I reached out to a good friend who's a roaster in Baltimore. And he and I worked out on a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, coffee blend that just absolutely engaged a lot with all of the flavors that we had on Fratello. For me, it's unbelievably exciting to see you know newer com new companies coming out with their coffee, seeing how it so how it works, and and and, 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 it, and it's very exciting because it's for me one of the perfect pairings in when it comes to cigars. You got that alkalinity and you got the acidity on cigar when it comes into your mouth, it just matches and goes right in between. That's a key word. So now we got you have the original line. Yes. Now you come out with uh, the boxer. What what, yes. what is um, the, uh, the the new thing about the boxer? What is it makes it uh, unique and different from the original line? Very unique. Uh, we launched the boxer torpedo about a year about 
six, seven, eight months ago, uh, we started playing with the filler and the proportions of the tobacco. I can't box press something like this because I would break the wrapper, so I have to loosen up the tobacco inside already. The way we loosened up the tobacco was just shifting the proportions of what was already on the original line. And it came absolutely gorgeous. We, we shifted up at least four or five times just to see what was connecting. Exact same wrapper, exact same binder, and exact same filler. It's just on the proportions and how we put it, and how was the placement. Did we put it all the way throughout? Did we worked it out and just broke it, the, broke the bunch a little bit and just shifted, and we did. It was absolutely amazing. All right. So, we've got the old line, or the old line. <laughs> it's only been out for a couple of years. We've got the original line, we got the boxer. We got the Lancero, which most of us can't get our hands on. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what's what's coming up? What's coming up? Um, so, very excited about this year. We might be coming out with something new. Uh, still in the works. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, things that have happened this past year in terms of the blending, in terms of what we want to achieve with our with our future blend. Um, I waited two years. Yeah, just two years before I came out with a new cigar. Why? Because People haven't even tried my cigar. And so why would I come out constantly with something new, something new, something new? People want it, but it's 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 there are I'm I'm basically tapping into, you know, a small percentage of the entire population who have ever tried my cigars. So I want to obviously continue to expand the word of our Fratello and then my Corona and my Robusto, my Toro and my 6x16 in the box for torpedo before we come out with something new. Is, is it in the word? Yes. We're working on it right now, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get a chance to see what it's going to be uh, going for. Yeah, we, we say on the Federation all the time, you know, everybody's always looking for that new thing, what's next? Right. You, know, you came out with this last week, okay, what's coming up next? Right. And uh, so, yeah, it's, it's especially for, for a new company, you got to get out there and, and kind of uh, get get that recognition before you start throwing out uh, you know new stuff every couple of months. Absolutely. Um, and people, you want to make sure that have a strong following. If you look at some of these bigger companies right here, um, Ashton, uh, La Flor Dominicana, uh, you know, uh, Padron, and all these companies, they're not coming out with an enormous amount of new cigars. They're sticking to their guns, they got an amazing cigars, and they've been able to just, you know, push their cigars in the way to have that longevity going forward. For me, it's about longevity going forward, you know what I mean? And so, we continue to maintain the quality of Fratello, we're in full production uh, with our cigars. It's just a matter of how do we take it to the next level with a future blend that would just be enhancing to our line. Excellent, excellent. All right, so now, talked about cigars, now how about the Outlaw? I know you've been here before, yes. but this is your first chance to have a party here. What do you think of this, this place? Is, this, is just, this is just such a change. I mean, this is what you say. I mean, it's such a change. Uh, Kendall Branding and the guys are just so amazing with us. I mean, we've been able to be one of those cigar brands that they've been able to, uh, you know, have had some success, and hence the reason we are here. Um, and I'm just excited to be able to come to Kansas, man. I mean, it's just, I got, I was yesterday talking to some of the guys and talking about the barbecue and talking about what's unique, and I blurred out that I was like, I had some of the best barbecue in a particular joint, oh. and the guy was like, oh no, the best barbecue is in this other location, or this other place, and I'm like, okay, so now, I basically have 24 hours, I'm going to have to eat myself <laughs> through all of the well, joints of the barbecue. You make, you make, a, you make a, a, a store exclusive yes. for a store down in Texas, yes, yes. and you come up here and say, yeah, I, I can't disagree with yes, the barbecue. Yes, yes. Um, but, you know, I, I talk up the, uh, the outlaw to the guys on the Federation yeah. all the time and finally get a chance to come out here and uh, and uh, get a chance to show them around and see everything. Absolutely. And, and you're here, and so uh, it's been really exciting. It's a great um, spot. Got great cars outside. It got a lot of people, you know, great food, great, uh, 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 you know, a lot of drinks. So it's a phenomenal spot to be in. One of the best parties I've ever been to. Well, thanks for uh, having a minute to chat with us. Such a pleasure, nice. man. We've been Hope you guys get a chance to enjoy the cigars. We've had a and, lot of uh, fun. Yeah. And uh, for those of you on the Federation, take a chance to uh, get on the site and uh, check out uh, Omar's video. He was on Cigar Chat uh, a little while back. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to talk to Logan and have him on the show sometime soon Absolutely. again. And uh, stay smoky.
is made exactly to my palate. Um, I was looking for something that was very rich, earthy, kind of dirty, chocolate, with a lot of white pepper, especially through the nose. I want a lot of white pepper. I really, you know, one of my favorite cigars is the Padron 85, which is Padron's spiciest cigar. Um, so I was looking for something that, that had a lot of richness and a lot of body. Um, not every factory has tobaccos that can get you there. That's the closest, I'm not going to say this cigar is perfect, because I'm always trying to make, you know, black powder took three and a half years over 400 blends. So I will take my time to get a cigar exactly the way that I want it. But tradition for me is a great balance of lots of different nuances that I'm looking for in a cigar. Um, so it's got a little bit of everything in it, uh, in, in order to get a little, a little different piece of a nuance that I was after. Start out with a San Andreas wrapper, which gives you the chocolates and, and dirtiness. Um, I use uh, Hamastron in the Seiko. Hamastron's a dominant tobacco. Um, uh, San Andreas is also dominant, so that'll create a real muddy cigar if you don't use other tobaccos to dominate it. Um, and then I use Broadleaf Ligero in order to add kind of a dark tone to the overall blend. Uh, and most of the rest of it is all Nicaraguan. The binder that's on the cigar is an Esteli uh, tobacco that AJ grew and fermented that is a little shorter cycle on the fermentation, so it's very, very spicy. So all the spice in that cigar comes out of the binder. So it's designed to be really pretty big for its flavors and things. Yeah, I think you'll smoke it. It's not, it's not probably my boldest cigar, but it's, um, for me, it, it hits on about four or five tones that were really important to me to get in a cigar, which is complicated to get all that much in a cigar um, in other factories that I've tried. Now, I saw recently that you were, um, were, were getting back over into Dominican. Is there a Dominican blend coming along? I've got a few Dominican blends. Uh, no, I, I no longer blend in the DR. <laughs> Mainly because I don't like the tobacco, frankly. Uh, I've got, got a few Cigar Federation guys that would agree with you. Yeah, I mean, it's just me personally. But, you know, High Plains is 100% Dominican. Uh, Dominican Criollo wrapper. Um, somewhere I've got a few others. But, uh, you know, I blended over there with Guillermo Leon. Um, Manuel Anoa is their blender. So that's the guy that I spent the time with. Uh, Hochi Blanco. Yep. Um, so, you know, it was a good time. It was a good, great place to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, great place to go and, and really learn that side of the business, the DR side of the business. Uh, but, you know, Nicaragua was for me. I love the tobacco in Nicaragua. And, and so that's the rest of my time. All right. All right. Well, we appreciate your time. Um, they can still order some of these things direct. Yeah, on the, the Outlaw website, right? The only cigars that Gunslinger sells to other stores are Perdition and Drift. Okay. And and all my moving forward blends will be Gunslinger, owned by Gunslinger rather than the Outlaw. Okay. Um, all the, these are kind of legacy blends that are from my time of, of studying. And, and so those I will continue to produce for the store. Some of them will go away because, you know, frankly, in order to repeat a blend, you know, it's one thing getting a blend. It's another thing repeating the blend. Because you got to keep getting that same tobacco. Same tobacco. And you got to re-blend it and, you know, modify it because of the new batch or whatever. And, and so some of them I'm going to let go because I just don't want to spend the time to, to manage that. Uh, but some of them I'm going to continue to produce for now I do know I've seen that you guys have started to get some uh, some orders out there, um, kind of uh, starting to work out across the country. Um, so um, just just for some of the guys out there that want to try to get a hold of some of these, what are some any, any uh, uh, shops out there come to mind that they might be able to find out there? Because I've got people all across the country and Canada and wherever else I know. So well, I went into business December first, mm -hmm. and I wouldn't make any phone calls through December because it, you know it's kind of a slap to the face to call a cigar store in December <laughs> and say pick up my new brand. <laughs> so it's it's going to be slow, and I want it to be slow. But some of the stores, like if you're in New Hampshire, you got two guys, which is oh, I saw you know, guys really well. Yep. Down in Texas, you can go to uh, Elite Cigars. Um, if you're in Colorado, you go to Smoker Friendly or the Van Manor. Um, so I've just kind of around the states got a hodgepodge of, of stores, Leaf and Bean, and uh, wherever, where's Island Jim from? Wherever that's at. <laughs> guys know Leaf and Bean pretty well. Right, right. right. Leaf and Bean, and down in Florida, it's about Wendy. So you're going to be uh, back in uh, uh, 
Rocky Mountain in the Cats this year? Oh, I hope so. so. All right. Right. Good luck. I know a few of the guys will definitely stop out by there. So you can uh, see him at uh, Rocky Mountain Cigar Fest. Um, yeah. Thanks for taking the time, brother. Like, talk to you. Cigar Federation, stay smoking. Kick ass, brother.